What is up fellow summoners? Welcome back to the channel today for another Alliance War gameplay video. This time we're going up against Gods of the Realm Elite. This is uh, Gore 3, 9.7 million Alliance. And I was trying to think of another time that I've gone up against uh, a Gore Sister Alliance and I don't think that I ever have before. So this is a first for me. It is a very, um, it's a very good Alliance War gameplay video. Uh, mostly because it's just different. As you can see here, I am bringing in Yandu, who I just uh, picked up, and I'm also bringing in Beast. Um, so this is a little bit different setup. I like to try to do this from time to time, um, just to make things interesting, I guess, give myself a little bit of a challenge, and just to test characters out. So, I brought in Hulk to Alliance War gameplay videos before. I don't bring him a whole lot, but uh, bringing him back, and then bringing in Yandu and Beast for the first time. Now, I knew that uh, my... Uh, my alliance member had already taken out the bleed node just above me there, so that is what was uh, what allowed me to not have to bring in vision for the bleed immunity and uh, bring in beast because I really wanted to test Yandu, but he had the block penetration synergy with beast, so I figured, hey, what the heck, don't need the bleed immunity. We'll throw him in there and uh, see what happens. So this is um, this is the plagued mind. Uh, this is the outlast. I think it's is it outlast? Should have read that while I was talking, but either way. Uh, it is a Juggernaut, and this Juggernaut is taking heavy, heavy damage uh, from the Suicide Masteries. As you can see there, he's ticking, uh, what is that, for like over 500 damage there at the beginning. Um, which he's got a little bit of willpower, but willpower cannot even keep up with the uh, the amount of uh, damage he's taking from both Suicide Masteries. And also from Recoil, you can see there, he took uh, well over 3,000 damage, I think it was. So that's one of the biggest reasons, uh, well I shouldn't say biggest reasons, but one of the biggest downfalls to the uh, Suicide Masteries is that it significantly gimps and hinders uh, your defenders. This fight was really not difficult at all. I'm not really pushing um, per se, I'm just kind of sitting back because as you can see there he's ticking for well, uh, well over 150 damage uh, and that's what's going to kill him. I'll just let him bleed on out just like that. So, Beast, successful in his first fight. Uh, I really enjoy playing with Beast. Um, so, moving on to the next one. This is the Unblockable S2 node. It's the exact same character, Bliss La Suave. <laughs> Not sure how you say that, but... Yeah, he had the Juggernaut that I just went up against, so I knew it was going to be no, uh, another Suicide Masteries. And I'm, I'm thinking Hulk, because I'm assuming this is probably Hood or Dormammu. I see both of them a lot. Try to get class advantage, and it's not. Uh, it's actually Punisher, which is very funny. I just did a video on how to uh, how to evade his S2 on this unblockable node. Very simple, right here. All you have to do is evade the first gunshot. Don't even worry about the second one. Just stand there, put up your block, and you'll be good to go. It, it really is that simple. Evade the first gunshot. The second one won't do anything to you. And then block. And from this point, pretty much moving forward, it, it's pretty much game over. Uh, as you can see there, he's still taking tons and tons of damage from uh, Liquid Courage and uh, what's the other one? Liquid Courage and Double Edge. Double Edge, that's what it is. Uh, Recoil again here is going to kick in. Not quite as much as Juggernaut, uh, but yeah, still almost 2,000 damage. I don't know why people are putting Punisher on this node. Um, you know, if, you, if you're having struggles with it, make sure you go into my playlists. Watch the, um, it's like the gameplay tip guide playlist, something like that, but I just did a video last week on how to evade um, some of the characters on Unblockable S2, and Punisher was one of those that I was talking about, but he's really, really easy to evade. It's, n it's not very difficult if you know how to do it, so if you're struggling, make sure you go watch that video. So, thankfully, I'm able to get through the first two fights fairly easily. Uh, definitely them having Suicide Masteries helped out quite a bit. So, moving on now to the Stun Immune node, I definitely wanted to bring in Yandu here. Sometimes I'll see uh, Dormammu. He used to have Ultron on here all the time. Don't really see him anymore. Um, so I thought, you know, maybe maybe Hulk for Dormammu, but no. I'm fairly certain this is probably going to be a Nightcrawler. I would say probably 75% of the time this is Nightcrawler. So I wanted the class advantage to be able to test him out, and thankfully I guessed right here, uh, which it was... <laughs> I don't know. It, I'm not really sure how much of a guess it is. It's almost always Nightcrawler, but... Yeah, I, uh, I've still got my 20% boost that's active. I've had it going since uh, the Juggernaut fight, so he is hitting a little bit harder because of that. But there's a couple things I wanted to point out, uh, which at the beginning, um, yeah, Unfazed actually pops in right here, uh, making me unstoppable, so I'm able to attack him and uh, kind of shrug off him hitting me. And then right here, it happens again. He evades uh, Unfazed procs again. I'm immediately able to come back and uh, separate myself a little bit with that S1. 
Now, my uh, particular play style when I'm fighting Nightcrawler, I try my very best to try and push him over into Swashbuckling. It's so much easier if you can get him over there. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, I'm, I'm trying to give myself a little bit of space, trying to get him to uh, evade back. And right there, the Aka Arrow, uh, that's something I want to talk about more here in a second, but you'll, you'll see it again and, and throughout much of the fight. 685 damage is what the Yaka Arrow is doing, uh, plus causing a bleed through the block. And much of that is due to the increased armor penetration and block penetration that he receives when he's attacking with that uh, Yaka Arrow. And then also he's got an additional... 400% uh, block, I can't remember if it's block penetration or armor penetration, what it's called, um, synergy that he gains with Beast. So uh, for, for this node, and actually for the next node as well with Thorns, you'll actually see me uh, doing quite a bit of damage through the block, and I'm totally fine with that. But uh, yeah, I am able to get him over into his swashbuckling form. From this point, I'm wanting to try to bait out uh, his S1, because I want to give my, my S2 a, a shot here. I know it hits pretty hard. So I hit him once, the Yaka arrow, again every time you hit has a chance to cause a bleed, so there you saw it, causes a bleed. And then we come in, 2,400 and 6,000-ish, something right there, so yeah, that S2 hit pretty hard. Um, I know I had class advantage and some boosts on, but still, that was what upwards of about 13, 14,000 damage, something like that. Uh, plus a bleed, so not not bad at all. I was feeling very good about that fight, uh, about that fight with Nightcrawler. All right, moving on to the Thorns node, and this was the big one. Um, I, I kind of had a gameplay in mind that I wanted to use Yandu for, see if it worked out, and thankfully, as you'll see, it worked out even, it worked out much better than I had even anticipated that it was going to. Uh, for a couple different reasons that I'll point out. Now, I assumed this was going to be Mutant. I thought it was going to be Cyclops, but uh, it's Iceman. So I am taking, um, what is it, Cold Snap, I think is the debuff that I've got on myself right now. Uh, but just pay attention to this. With the Yaka Arrow, I do not take any Thorns Node. So there, I, I hit him, 394, Yaka Arrow, nothing, 394. So the, the 217, that's from the Cold Snap, that, that's nothing. But pretty much um, with a five-hit combo, you hit, um, you, you start off with a physical attack, and then it alternates to the Yaka arrow, back to the physical attack, back to the Yaka arrow. And the, the arrow is not triggering any sort of thorns, um, thorns damage on yourself. And in addition to that, uh, because he is bleed immune, the Yaka arrow is also causing armor breaks. And he has a chance to stack those armor breaks, whether he's physically hitting him or whether it's through a block. And you'll see right here, 876. 733, 581, this is all block damage because of those armor breaks that I put on him. And all of that damage, I'm not taking any thorns damage from. So a lot of the times I was doing a five hit combo, but really you could do a four hit, do a medium followed by three lights. Um, and only two of your four hits would be subject to the thorns damage. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy with how this fight ended. Most of the damage that you saw me take um, actually occurred during the cold snap debuff that I had. Um, overall, I would say that um, you know if you're doing a four hit combo, you could almost say that he's got like 50% um, lowering defensive ability accuracy because for two of the four hits, if you're doing a four hit combo, um, are not going to trigger that thorns node. So I, I, I've got a big smile on my face while I'm talking about it. I, I think I finally found somebody that's going to be able to deal uh, deal with that Thorns node effectively without having to tramp in somebody um, like uh, like Black Widow or Electra or somebody just for um, their their defensive ability accuracy when they have really no other use outside of that. So yeah, very very excited for that. Here I don't know what I'm looking through. I'm looking through my boosts, I guess. I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna bring in Beast. My my plan is to get him into his acrobatic form, which is going to significantly lower the power gain from the enemy. The problem that I did not take into consideration is I completely forgot about the timer uh, power draining me every 20 seconds. I'm, I'm completely clueless to that fact right now, so I'm just playing normally, trying to bait out specials, waiting to get to my second bar of power. And right here, um, I should have finished my combo right here. I didn't. Um, forgot about the power drain, and yeah, I, I, knew, I knew at this point I was totally screwed. There was nothing I could... Nothing I could do. I was planning on having that uh, power control and didn't have it. I, I think in theory that Beast would be a good Alliance War um, offensive character, but because you cannot control being in acrobatic form when you start the fight, unless you're under 50% health, 
I don't know if I'll bring him back again. I guess the way I could have played it is just started the fight, waited for it to time out, and then come back in because I would have come back in automatically under 50% health and in acrobatic form. Um, so yeah, I've got to bring back in Yandu. I did heal him up a little bit. The nice thing here is with that S1, the heal block, you can see there, even though I am taking limbo damage, or limbo damage, excuse me, I don't really ever have to worry about her getting that uh, regen back because if I push her into bar of power, I'm just going to slap on the S1 heal block. And really, she doesn't have a lot of health. Um, so when you're not having to worry about um, you know, her regening and you having to do the, oh, the damage two and three times over, the, the limbo damage is not as significant because it, it doesn't last quite as long um, just because the fight's over quicker. So Yandu, again, uh, took out Nightcrawler, took out Iceman, and then took out Magic. Uh, really, really pleased with the way that that played out. So then um, on... I don't usually have many occasions to actually get up into this middle path here. Um, usually they've got it clear by the time I get there. But yeah, we've still got magic hanging out here. Uh, 68,000 damage. I'm thinking about using Hulk, but I thought, you know what? Let me just use Yondu. And then if need be, I'll finish it up with Hulk. And that'll give me class advantage against Dormammu, who's the end boss. So I'm bringing Yondu, and I know that I'm probably not going to be able to finish this fight. I can heal block her, but I can't keep her from going into limbo. And that limbo, dam limbo damage from a mini boss is pretty significant. Uh, so right there, you see me. I fire off the S1 uh, to get the uh, to get the heal block. I've got five weakness debuffs on her, four from the bleed, one from the heal block. So she's really not hitting very hard either from that special. Um, you know, I'm doing everything I can. I, I know that I'm probably going to push her into limbo here on the next one. Praying, hoping for a bleed. Don't get it. And uh, yeah, there's there's nothing I can do at this point. She takes me out. But really, I, I did a fairly good job I think <laughs> if I would have healed him up again I could have taken magic out um, so he, he's definitely not a um, what's the word I'm looking for he, he's not necessarily the answer for magic but if he is full health you probably will be able to take magic out without an issue um, it, it just comes down to how many of those limbos can you live through and if you're at full health there's quite a few that you can that you can eat on that so I come in with Hulk. Hulk is uh, class advantage, have a little bit of a boost. When he's getting the Furies, he's hitting pretty hard. And right here, I'm thinking I'm just going to go for it. Going to get the stun. It's going to have an extra second, and we'll be able to finish her off even through that limbo damage. Man, he hits so, so hard. I cannot wait to get my hands on a uh, five-star Awakened Hulk. From this point, uh, moving up into Dormammu, uh, it took a little bit before he actually opened up. And by that time, I was not around my computer to be able to film anything. I did go in and do a little bit of damage against him. However, it wasn't anything worth showing, so it didn't really make um, that much of a difference one way or the other. And we did ultimately get the victory. Um, I think we've gone seven and three in our last 10 Alliance War fights. Um, so yeah, feeling, feeling pretty good where we're at right now in a pretty good groove. Got a good defensive setup. Got a lot of good players on the offensive side. Um, so things, things are gelling for us. I know as soon as I say that, we're gonna get absolutely smashed by uh, whoever we play next. So hopefully I'll be able to get footage of that for you as well. I think that this um, has really changed my mind as far as the characters that I'll probably be, uh, be bringing in in the future. I think Yandu is definitely gonna become part of my, my core Alliance War offensive team. Uh, and I will pair him up with either Hulk and Vision or maybe Wolverine and Vision. Um, I don't know, it just depends upon if I've got that bleed node to deal with or not. Um, you know, it's good from time to time to switch up your characters you're using, uh, just to give a kind of a fresh take. Maybe you, you can you can see characters at a different view when you bring different ones in, but I think it keeps the game fresh when you're switching things up. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great weekend. I will see you all in the next one. Take care.